Hello, hello! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video, and it's time for a patch notes overview, in this case, patch 11 hotfix number 2. Hey everyone, as you probably know, patch 11 has been one of the most problematic until date and this is the second hotfix Bethesda has released since patch 11 went live last week. I had the chance to test almost every single point in the patch notes for this second hotfix and I'm going to share with you 13 points that have changed or been improved or fixed as well as a few more things that I found out while I was testing during almost five hours. So let's start. As number one, I have selected the legendary enemy nameplate bug that was introduced with patch 11. Actually, Bethesda claimed to be two bugs at once. They have fixed the first bug in the previous hotfix. Supposedly, legendaries were not dropping legendary items when they had no stars. But then there was a second issue where certain no star legendaries that were supposedly normal mobs were bugged and their names, the nameplate, was showing them as no star legendaries. They have fixed this now, at least it seems like that. I haven't really found any no star legendary that dropped no legendary item so far. But then again, I haven't really found that many legendaries today during these five hours. So I can't say 100% that it is fixed, but it seems like it is. Talking about legendary spawn rates, it seems like the spawn rate in general is still the same as when it changed, when patch 11 went live. This is not really in any of the patch notes, but it's an issue that I have been discussing ever since. And today I decided to go to White Springs and to West Tech once again. I did two runs each in different servers and you can't imagine what happened. I found two legendaries in total, four runs, two legendaries. This is like... Uh, unique historic moment in my Fallout 76 journey or I, I'm not sure what to call it but I am like breaking record after records. This is a place where I used to find 10 to 15 legendaries each run if I was able to do it from start to the very end and now I had the run with no single legendary. Zero. West Tech, the same thing. I had one run today where I found a three stars legendary and then the second run, none, zero legendary bosses. That scares me because these two places, locations, they are the best in the game. So if the spawn rates here are like this, imagine in other places, it's like almost impossible to find legendaries in locations out of events. And I don't think that's a good thing for the game itself. Maybe we can expect some sort of legendary kit coming to the Atomic Shop soon. It wouldn't actually surprise me. This issue seems to be quite awful. I didn't have the chance to experience myself, gladly, but I read about it over Reddit and it seems like people were actually getting the event rewards, it's just that they weren't displaying, so people thought that they didn't get anything for doing the events. Now it seems to be fixed. I have done several events today and I got rewards for all of them as well as the display. So I'm assuming that this problem is fixed or maybe not. Who knows? I mean, they keep saying they fix things and then the issues come back later. So let's hope this is not one of them. At least we know it's a display bug. So even if it happens, maybe it's just, you know, it's not showing, but you are actually getting the rewards, which is quite nice in my opinion. It could be way worse, much worse. 
There was another issue with the power armor. When you renamed it and you put your power armor back into your inventory, the renamed pieces would go back to normal. And that's not so cool because then you would have to rename your pieces every single time. I mean, I don't know personally why would you rename your power armor pieces because they are always together in the frame, at least for me. But I tried to do this today. I renamed a few pieces. Then I got my power armor recalled into my inventory and they stayed with the same names that I have just given them. So I suppose it is working as they wanted it to be from the start. At least it seems that way from my testing here. Damn, patch 11 is very, very rich in power armor bugs. So there were three more issues with the power armor that Bethesda has fixed, at least it is part of the patch notes. The first one is when you entered the power armor from the front, sometimes your controls would go unresponsive or you wouldn't be able to do anything by other words. And that is fixed now. At least I have tried this at least a dozen of times and nothing really happened. I could access everything, I could walk, I could, you know, uh, attack, jump, whatever. It's just I'm always over encumbered. So I couldn't test one of the bugs, which is when you fast travel to a teammate, sometimes your controls would go responsive as well when you are inside of the power armor. Also, when you came from Nuclear Winter and joined Adventure, sometimes you wouldn't be able to use your power armor at all, but... Yeah, I tried that and everything seems normal. I have never experienced any of these bugs before either. So guys, if you are still experiencing any of them, do let me know in the comment section below. If you have a melee build, you have surely noticed this one. I have noticed it, I think, a few days ago when I started using my dagger more often. This bug doesn't happen with every single weapon and this is a very nice example where I am hitting the assault runs with my blade and the first hit never registers even though it displays the damage done. In theory it should have hit but nothing happens to the HP bar and I have several other people telling me that they are being affected by this bug quite often and with all their melee weapons. For me, it's mostly with my daggers, my bat and my super sledge are not really affected. But this is not really new from the hotfix, it's something that came with patch 11 and I didn't really pay attention before but it is there since the patch update and it still hasn't been fixed. Maybe you still remember that since patch 11 things became very unstable and for example camp loading times were back to what they used to be, very slow. Sometimes it would take around 30 seconds to fully load but that seems to be gone. It's also not part of the patch notes, but it's something I realized. My camp is loading much faster once again. I tried with other people's caps and they are loading almost immediately as well. So I'm certain that they have done something else here again, because I think with patch 10, 5, they improved the loading speed of camps. But then with the patch 11, things were a bit wonky again. But now we are back to where things were supposed to be, which is great. At least something that is clearly better and has been improved, even though they have not added it to the patch notes. So with the last hotfix, the quick bar had a heavy bug where you couldn't switch your slots at all. For example, if you had weapons, you couldn't change them. But it's only with it would do the same for any other item that you had in your quick bar because it is a slot bug. And some worked, some did not at certain times. Today I tested this again and one time I got this as a result. So my slots weren't bugged, but every time I change the slot, I get a small short freeze. It lags out, but it's not exactly lag. It's like my game freezes every time I change slots. 
And this was the only time that it happened. Every other things were normal, so I guess they tried to fix the previous bug, but instead they got this as a result, like the bug mutated or things got better, as in you can change slots now, but things are very laggy. I'm not sure, but it really needs to be fixed, because if you are changing weapons or slots often, you can easily die if you get this sort of freeze in combat. In Nuclear Winter, it seems like Bethesda has increased the server stability, it's part of the patch notes, and I can confirm I played several matches today and everything seemed pretty normal. This footage is from last week, and even in the past few days I had several disconnects from the server in Nuclear Winter, like everyone gets kicked out of the match, at some times I had people in my friend list in the same match and we all got kicked, so I know as a matter of fact that it wasn't me, my connection was running, so it was the server. Now things are okay, I guess I didn't get any disconnect until this point, but it needs a little bit more testing to tell you 100% that things are normalized. Well, at least they have claimed to increase stability to all nuclear winter servers. So maybe they are saying the truth, maybe they're not. Only time will tell. The servers might be more stable, but on the other hand, I have spotted this new bug that doesn't seem funny at all. It prevents you from choosing where you want to spawn. So after waiting the time out, the map will pop up and you are supposed to choose where you want to spawn. But with this bug, it won't happen. When the time is out, you will wait a little bit and then you will be put into a random spawn, just like this. I had this before, but I am all tab quite often, so I just thought that maybe I lagged out or I missed it. But today I was in game and I clearly saw it happening. So I can tell you guys, this is a new bug. I'm not sure if it came out with the last hotfix or with patch 11 altogether, but it's certainly a thing right now. But this hotfix wasn't just about fixing things, it also introduced a few new stuff, especially in survival mode. Now we have a test main scoreboard and the top three players no longer display in the map. You cannot see the location of the top three ranked persons as it used to happen. They have changed the main scoreboard and named it test and it's quite empty, there is no players there. I guess it's the only way they found to delete the showing location system that they had in this type of server. So no more sneak peeking on the top three players in survival mode. That is a gunner now. Something quite interesting that I found out today is that the pacifist mode is working on survival mode. I don't recall it ever working in this mode before, but today while I was trying to test the damage changes with my friend here, I attacked him first and then I got this message that you usually get in adventure mode and I could not attack him first. I had to remove it in the game options to be able to attack him first. Come on, Bethesda, this is survival. You're supposed to attack people and they attack you back. You know, like you don't need permission from one another if you have pacifist on because it doesn't really matter, does it? Well, I guess it does now. Well, 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 we had some big changes in the damage combat system for survival mode. Bethesda has nerfed most of the damage most damage sources such as bonus multipliers, no base weapon damage and even the maximum damage that you can do with your weapons. So today I decided to test damage wise without perks and then with my usual perks and 
I did feel a huge difference. For example, here I'm using no perks. And look, I'm tickling him. No damage at all. And these are, you know, high tier weapons. Bloodyard, Executeer, level 45 to 50. But with the perks, things kind of normalize, you know, the damage is okay-ish. But I am not able to want to hit people, at least not him. But I can tell you that he has two, three stars gear, just like me. So I think he is a great example of high-end gameplay, gear, and so on. But I really think this is a great idea because one of the main problems with survival and why people don't really want to play this mode is because first you lose a lot of things, your junk and lots of aid items and that's already a big no-no for people. But the second is that you usually die and kill very fast. So you find someone, you want to shot them and that's it. It's not fun. It doesn't require strategy at all. So I think Bethesda is trying to turn the tables around to change the game and incite people to actually join survival mode servers and try to have a great fight while surviving and enjoying the 20% experience bonus. And as you can see, even with my shotgun, it's a bloodied explosive shotgun. Damage is not impressive. I will show you now with the perks. And I used to two shot people with this. I'm very close to him as well. So before with the shotgun, at this range, you would pretty much one max two shot people. And now I need way more to take someone down. Then he tried to hit me with his explosive rifle. He has rifle perks and perception. And I'm like a bullet sponge, okay? It's it's taking forever for him to take me down. I'm off HP as well. So I'm really curious to see how things will turn out with other players. Maybe people can still find out a way to one hit one another. You know, with buffs, with certain builds. I don't know, I still believe it's possible, but for now things look like they are much, much more balanced and, well, more enjoyable if you can create some sort of strategy to start fighting each other without worrying about dying in a few hits. Thumbs up for Bethesda for this change, I suppose. Now, to finish off, I have two extras for you. The first is about a new event coming next week called Meet Week. It's a seasonal event. It will be up for only one week with special exclusive rewards, but it's being delayed because Bethesda said they are a bit behind with all the hot fixes being released for patch 11 which means patch 11.5 is coming a little bit later as they intended. Well, I think we understand their reasons and it's better this way. Maybe they will prevent more new bugs from arising. Maybe, hopefully, they will prevent a second mess that was patch 11. So I think the community doesn't really mind this small delay. On the other hand, it's not so great to announce something and then say, hey, we are a bit behind, we cannot meet the deadline and so on. It's not nice to do that, but oh well, if it's for a good reason, I think it's better that way. The second extra is obviously about the bugs that still continue in Fallout 76. They have fixed a few things, that is true, but don't expect an experience free of bugs. That's not going to happen, probably not anytime soon. Bugs are still there and they will always be. 
I think, or judging how we are close to one year anniversary and things are still very messy. There are new bugs rising almost every day and they grow, you know, they are growing more than the rhythm that Bethesda is fixing them. Just like my power armor lights always come from the side since patch 11 came out. It's very frustrating and I avoid playing in the dark these days, at least when I'm inside the power armor because I can't see shit. It's quite annoying, but I can't do anything about it. Also, your friend list will often bug, especially when you first log in. Things take a while to stabilize and when you are full stamina, your character will act like you are out of stamina. You can also get invisible heads, just like mine here. Pretty, huh? And even out of power armor, your stamina bar might play tricks on you. And as usual, the legendary bug where you get no loot from the queen is active. It has been better after the last hotfix, because when they released patch 11, I was getting this bug almost every queen. Gladly they did something and things got better, but it's still there, it didn't go away, and every now and then you will face this very, very frustrating experience, but what can you do, really? And these are the 13 things that I think you really need to know about the second hotfit about the second hotfix for patch 11. What do you think? Are you experiencing any of these issues? Did you find any new ones or do you think that I'm wrong with my testings? I mean, this is just my personal experience. It's just my walkthrough. So some of the results I got here might be wrong. So do let me know in the comment section below. It's very, very likely that some of these bugs were not entirely fixed. It has happened in the past, it keeps happening, so why wouldn't it happen in the future as well? I'm Marta Branco, thank you so much for watching. I'm glad that Bethesda finally fixed some more things. The survival mode changes are also quite positive in my opinion, and that's going to be everything for today's video. If you are new to the channel, I usually do patch notes overviews like this one. If you'd like to see more content like this, then feel free to hit the subscribe button below. Also, I have a Patreon page, so go ahead and check it out. I will see you very soon in the next video. Take care. Adios. Bye-bye. For now.